Yeah, I think we, we um, uh, I lost my media manager, so I think, you think you guys can shoot? <laughs> yeah, he'll probably be upset, but I think we can go. Um, yeah, listen, um, I think the scoreboard is a, is a really good reflection of the game. I think where Wales are as a team is, is number three in the world. They showed it today. Um, you know, we can we can find a few, a few excuses, but that will only, we will only be bluffing ourselves. We're saying we lost, you know, Sabu in the warm up and then Archie in the first few minutes, but the, the reserves who came on, Cheslin played really well and, and I think Iben, Iben did well. So uh, I think all excuses aside, it's just um, the Wales are just totally in sync and aligned in what they want to do tactically and technically and um, you know we felt it today um, there was a glimpse of chances here and there for us to get back into the game uh, but on the day they, they, they were just better yeah I'm not sure you know I, I must go and watch the game nice and, and calm Obviously, a bit emotional. Uh, we would have loved to end the tour on, on a win, uh, but and I, don't, I don't know if it was a good test match to watch. Was it, watch was an intense test match. I'm not sure if it was. Uh, it certainly felt the first 15, 20 minutes that like it was a erratic, busy test match. But then there were stages where, where it was really tactical, and I, I thought tactically they really outkicked us on, on the day. Uh, uh, not so much that they did go really, really well, but I thought the, the distance kicks was was excellent, uh, and uh, and we struggled to get into their half. Um, and then when we got there once or twice, held up over the try line, and then we lost the scrum five meters out, and you know then we lost the line out. So uh, unfortunately, um, there's a few things we did wrong. Um, I guess the positive is uh, if we do all those bad things, uh, and we still were in with a chance in the, in the game at some stage. I think it was there when we were. Uh, six points behind in minute 71 when one of their players dived and our players there and one of our players back there, I think Chetland Colby in the 22. I still thought we had a chance, but after that penalty, you know, I could feel uh, the game is slipping away from us. It's been a good uh, autumn for the Northern Hemisphere nations. What do you think that is? No, I just think, you know, they're they, they planning the cycle, uh, how they planned it to, to, to peak in the World Cup was, was excellent. Uh, I think they obviously think more long term uh, than maybe uh, other, other other countries or, or maybe just in, in, in crisis management trying to get back onto the boat trying to good, have good performances trying to be put squads together uh, but if you look at Warren's squad you know you can see he's building lots of fly-offs lots of nines lots of twos lots of fifteens uh, you know he's got a proper squad to pick a World Cup squad out of and I think uh, he's learned out of previous mistakes and, and I think you know even with bigger coming on and uh, yeah, there's so many guys that you can still pick, which you didn't pick today. So, first of all, I think the planning is good, and then secondly, you know, it always happens like this that when we're at the end of our cycle and we we have now uh, it's a three months break, uh, uh, they just have seems to have that little bit more spark and energy and, and, and intensity. And then June when they come and visit us in South Africa, we seem to have that little bit more of spark and energy. You know, so I think the two. Um, not, not that it's an excuse. We were f beaten fairly and squarely today. I'm just trying to explain wh uh, um, why the the same is doing so well because they are doing really well. When it's been such a close series, Northern Hemisphere doing well, does that actually whet your appetite even more? It does, it does. You know, um, I don't, I'm not so sure if my bosses and the fans in South Africa is <laughs> enjoying it so much that it's so close and, and, and we're losing matches like this. But I think it bodes really well for the World Cup in terms of, you know, look at England today. Uh, uh, you know, Scotland um, has really done well. Uh, Wales is doing well. France on the day can put anybody. Um, you know, Argentina is a, is a wild card out there. Uh, I just think Wales has, has, has made themselves solid there at that number three position, man. How do you reflect on your time in charge so far? That's the 12 test matches, we won 14 and we won seven. You know, so it's 50% win the ratio, and that's the only thing that counts um, where I live. Uh, um, uh, we will try to be not emotional and look at, at 
what is we what is better where have we grown uh, and where we uh, bad I think I think the positive is we have shown on the day when everything is aligned and and, and the guys are all all you know in the same frame of mind and and and, and everybody's feel as experienced as the next guy we can beat the All Blacks away uh, you know we can beat England in the series uh, but we've also seen we can lose to Argentina away so I think um, the frustrating thing for me and for our team is the, the inconsistency and that comes with a two capper at nine and another two capper at, at, at scrum off who's, who's a backup nine who's got only two caps and six caps at the wing and uh, you know the, those are the kind of things that only get sorted out with, with experience so all in all I would I don't know out of 10, I will probably give myself a five. Uh, or the team of five, you know, we were only won 50%. Russell, you enough time Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely they think there's enough, uh, um, you know, because if, if the All Blacks are contenders and we can beat them in Wellington, you know, then, then and, and if they are favourites, then, then surely we should stand a chance. Uh, if Ireland could beat them at home uh, and, and we managed to beat Ireland somewhere, then, then they stand a chance. So, I think Wales don't have a realistic chance. Um, uh, just as a gentleman said, yeah, I just really think it, it's wide open. I've been involved with World Cup since 1995, and I feel this is a re really the one that I don't, I, I can't, put, I can't put money in who's going to be in the semi-finals. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, positives. Um, um, I, I guess the first England game I thought we really could win, and then we could have had three out of four. This game I just felt well, the Welsh were better than us, you know, and, and tactically, and uh, just uh, this outsmarted us. So, so I take that on the chin. Uh, the positives was England uh, who smashed Australia. Now, you know, they could they didn't even score a try against us. I think or one try against us. Uh, so uh, it was good there. We could beat Scotland. You know, we could grind it out against France. We. We were able to beat New Zealand, uh, we could have beat them at home, uh, so there's positives. Uh, our problem is consistency, and consistency only comes with experience, and, and we've got another four, five, four games to put into the guys uh, experience-wise before we, we eat that World Cup. He was busy. He was busy. He was like a check in the box. Uh, now he was. Look, obviously, uh, as we got into the change room, Sabu said his knee, knee didn't feel well, and as we ran out, he said, no, he can't run out, and Chesson had to hop in, and Damien had to hop in onto the bench, and I thought Chesson was amazing. Um, and uh, the same with uh, Damien Willems, who then had to come onto the bench, and then we lost Archia really uh, early, because Eben was supposed to run 40 minutes, and then Eben had almost 70 minutes. So, yeah, a lot of things didn't go away, but I think even if it did go away, Wales deserved to win this game.